we're here and we're here to help the startup community. Over the last couple of years, we've been trialing lots of activities with Enterprise Ireland from our Google for Entrepreneurs Day, where we bring the community together, we talk about the challenges that the community are facing, and we bring Google specialists to work with the community on some of the questions they have with regard to our products and how we do business. Okay. What Ireland needs to be an effective startup hub is an involved, engaged community and hot spots, tech hot spots for, for activity uh, to be really vibrant. And so we have these accelerators, we have these co-working spaces, we have an engaged uh, workforce and a highly educated workforce. We have what it takes for Ireland to be a leading hub for development of startups. Uh, in my speech, I referred to the, the trying to develop the, the new culture through the education system at all levels, an, an entrepreneurial culture, and that, is, and that it's a good career to become an entrepreneur, and that we should develop that as well. Uh, we're, we're working through our agencies in Enterprise Ireland and Science Foundation Ireland uh, to develop and channel money, money into the whole area of research and development and innovation. Uh, I do believe the key to, to a, a, a startup surviving and growing and scaling up is down to research and development and putting key money into the whole area of research, development, innovation. We're trying to do that through a range of agencies and government departments, but it also involves uh, making sure we work with the education system to have the talent to, to do that and to work in that area as well. Dublin has a great uh, range of supports and I'm representing the Dublin Chamber of Commerce here this morning and the Dublin Chamber of Commerce have uh, an initiative with Dublin City Council called Activating Dublin and in Activating Dublin we're trying to coordinate uh, opportunities and incentives and help for startup businesses. We need a national entrepreneurship education strategy to bring together all of the different initiatives that are happening at primary, secondary and third level education. The second point I was making is that entrepreneurship needs to be taught to all students in universities and institutes of technology. Uh, particularly I was focusing on the science, engineering and technology students because what we need in Dublin is not so much more of entrepreneurship but more innovative entrepreneurship if we're to be a global um, orientated city. We have an untapped uh, potential pool of talent which is the immigrant community which we're really not um, addressing that we they're young highly educated many of them are in our um, masters and PhD programs and we're not really you know going after them and these are the people who've already got networks of international contacts so let's look at getting um, those involved also first of all I would talk about diversity um, feeding into it I think it's key because I think of all the STEM programs that we think about and trying to get um, women into technology um, and part of what PayPal is trying to do is work with colleges we're working with Blanchetown IT, DCU, UCD encouraging females into the startup but into technology more importantly that's the first thing I'd say the second thing I would say is about the entrepreneurial skills and I think the skills are critical and we need to help um, startups and when I talk about we I'm saying PayPal the big organizations need to help the small organizations so we grow together and give them practical support to make sure they set them up for success we can be very optimistic about the pipeline of startups now in Ireland coming through the system who have the potential I think uh, to generate the kind of growth companies, job creation uh, and ultimately economic benefits that all of us anticipate for startups in the future. That we have to continue doing things like we did yesterday, like launching the Entrepreneurial Forum, talking about entrepreneurs, listening to what they have to say, which is something we don't do very well. In a lot of sectors in the public sector, we need to listen to what the industry needs. So I think it's very important that we put entrepreneurship on the career path and put it into the education system, because I think it needs to start a national school. Uh, and it needs to go all the way through and entrepreneurship needs to be taught in every faculty whether it's accounting or engineering or whatever that is part of the curriculum and I think and somebody who myself I'm an accountant we were never taught about how to run a business we were taught all the facts and figures but you know so I think every it, it needs to be across every faculty and so I think it's really important that people are aware there is support in Europe direct financial support uh, on the Horizon program the Cosme program is another program which is there 2.5 billion euros worth of funding for startup businesses to tap into. And of course, there also is a very substantial mentoring program, the Young Entrepreneurs Program, uh, that the EU supports as well. And I think linking those programs uh, to the opportunities for startup business is really important as a means of helping those businesses grow. 
Yeah, I was delighted to speak today and my presentation was around uh, two aspects of the Activating Dublin programme. Uh, a recommendation to develop an international startup competition for Dublin and also to develop an iconic uh, property space for startups in Dublin. I think both of those um, objectives will really put Dublin on the startup map, help create jobs and help create employment in Ireland. So I think Activating Dublin and the Vision 2020 project are going to make a really big impact. So today um, I was covering how Ireland could better position itself in attracting corporate backed accelerators. And so you know, there's evidence that supports that companies who have um, been part of a corporate backed accelerator program as well do have a higher survival rate than might otherwise be the case. And so it is important as well that Ireland you know, um, has these kind of programs to really enhance its position. Um, and as was the, the key finding that we had done when we had looked at a couple of other cities was that it really comes back to the overall ecosystem. So obviously there's a number of elements um, of the, the 2020 strategy that's looking at how we enhance Ireland's position across it and, and Dublin's position across a number of these. Um, and I think the Copperback Accelerator is just one element of that. Okay, well Enterprise Ireland uh, has a, an involvement with startups right through from the uh, third level in the university sector. We involved in uh, infrastructure in terms of putting incubation centres in the universities and institutes of technology in Dublin and elsewhere in terms of trying to encourage commercialisation of the, of the uh, research which is going on within third, third level centre. We then involved in uh, helping people get from that stage to commercialisation and feasibility funding support. So really trying to get from a concept to a business plan. Uh, we're then involved in the whole uh, funding side, so each year we would fund probably 450 entrepreneurs at different stages from feasibility to 180 that we would put funding into, of which 100 would be high potential startups. So a big role in the whole funding side, infrastructure, development of the venture capital sector within Ireland to make sure there's venture capital to support uh, the areas. We'd be working with inc with accelerators in order to, to try to ensure that people are uh, you know, getting the maximum support in terms of being able to uh, do their development. And then obviously one of the key challenges is maximising the growth of startups. So we have a lot of work in the whole um, development programme side and that's from the new frontiers types of programmes within the third level right through to accelerated growth programmes for startups, mentoring for startups, uh, uh, etc. So it's really from management of funding to uh, the, the, the third level side to VC, so quite a, a wide range of supports. There's three elements to our strategy. One is DC Orion Academy for Entrepreneurs, which has been running for a number of years. We have a range of initiatives, accelerated programs, the Pro Propeller Scheme, uh, business innovation programs. We've, I think we have about 12 different programs running at this stage, all externally facing and actually acting as a catalyst to promote entrepreneurship in the broader Irish environment, but obviously again with a significant regional focus in the Dublin area. That's number one. Number two, within the university itself, there's a strong commitment to actually ensure that our students become innovators and entrepreneurs. Uh, we introduced Ireland's first undergraduate student accelerator program in 2013. This is Ustart, uh, supported by JP Morgan. And that has had a huge impact on the student community and, and hugely su successful. And it proved to us that we've, if we create a framework of opportunities for students to be entrepreneurs in their own right, to have the experiential learning experience, that will start to create a new pipeline of entrepreneurs where students can fail and it, it isn't such a huge deal. Uh, the third element is, is we opened last year DCU Innovation Campus, which is a new 10-acre site right beside the university for companies, small and large. But it's creating a cluster effect, but it's, it's, it's accommodation, it's facilities, it's supports, but it's also proximity to the intellectual capital of the university, student interns, research projects, and access to uh, expensive research facilities. In the last couple of years, we have been working through IDA in attracting the next uh, movers in that space and hence today now we have got companies like uh, Airbnb, HubSpot, uh, Zendesk and uh, Squarespace and other companies like that that have come in on, 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 on as the next movers in the space. So Ireland is very much out there, Dublin is very much out there internationally as a very credible and established hub uh, and I think the opportunity now is to build off that and to use the um, exemplars uh, of these companies and the um, ambassadors that we have in these companies to help us with the startup community here locally. So 
Uh, it'd be nice to see a lot more integration in terms of the startup community with the international community that we have here. And that could be hugely impact impactful from the point of view of accelerating things for Dublin over the next couple of years. People are more entrepreneurial than, than, than we think. They are less afraid of failure. That's what the statistics show. Ireland is not doing badly. But there's a couple of things. Um, first of all, the domestic economy has been weak. And so uh, as that grows, hopefully that, that will uh, make things improve. Secondly, international focus. We're OK in terms of uh, international focus and what we do. But we need to do more and more of it. And there's been a lot of talk about that because Ireland is such a small country, we really need to be out there focused internationally. Um, then in terms of money, and this is the other important thing, uh, Irish entrepreneurs, the statistics show you, are not as focused actually on making money. And sometimes we do fi find this in my business, Good Buddies, you get companies coming in that want to raise money and sometimes they're more interested in the idea and the concept than they actually are in, in terms of making hard cash. And that's, that's really important. People need to be focused on that because that's what investors want. And the flip side of that is there are not enough small investors in Ireland. We're really, for every five investors uh, in the US that have invested in small businesses as individuals, there are only two in Ireland. If we can raise that and have less people investing in houses, 45% of all houses are sold for cash in the moment, at the moment. If we can get that cash to work in companies, uh, startup companies, that's a huge win. And if we get the four of those together, that could give us something like 80% additional startup activity over the next few years. Great. Firm, we have a track record of working, a long track record of working with startups, particularly technology startups. Um, and what we do is we work with the promoters of those companies to put in place the right corporate structure, to get fundraising, to um, protect and exploit their IP, to get in place employment incentive arrangements. And, and we'll, also, we'll also leverage our international network and in a way that supports Startup Ireland and its mission to get Dublin on the map as the go-to destination for global startup high potential companies. So we run uh, three or four acceleration programs. Uh, our propeller is a key one. It helps uh, high-tech startups um, through the very uh, normal acceleration model. Built on that, we discovered that one of the, the issues we had was that no women were applying for the program. So last year, we set up a female acceleration program. And very interestingly, kind of for over, we'd had about 200 perhaps uh, applications for our previous acceleration programs, a handful of them from women. When we actually then went out and set up a female call for female applications, we had 150 high quality applications for one program, so extraordinary. The other thing we're doing is we run an accelerator program for students. Uh, and once again, amazing raw talent, fabulous ideas. A lot of these uh, startups, because they are um, their students, they will fail, but the, the, the learning and the skills and everything is, is fantastic. I work quite closely with a number of tech startups uh, every year, and I work in California as well, and this is just as good. We have a burgeoning system. The problem is it's the Irish property problem. We're telling each other and we're not telling the world. It's like we're selling houses to each other again. We need to go to New York, go to Tel Aviv, go to San Francisco and declare victory for Dublin and move on because the hub here, the reality is we're selling a really, really strong reality. We're just not putting the data into usable format. Um, so I think it'll be interesting to see if we can, if we can uh, you know, in a very telling way put that data out there so that it starts to resonate with people around the world but we don't need to make anything up for once we're not over hyping the reality of dublin is phenomenal 